Hello, so today we're going to be fixing some broken plant LEDs that I have. I want to start by saying that I get all my lights now from Mars Hydro and I've never had a failure with Mars Hydro. These lights are from a different company. They're just ones I have left over. I now use only Mars Hydro. I bought both lights companies at the same time about three or four years ago when I started growing and Mars Hydro has never failed and the lights that I bought then have failed almost all of them so I'm not a professional I just know a little bit about electrical engineering and mainly from some hobby stuff with an Arduino kit and I built a solar generator back in my old house with my brother who's an electrician he helped me out a little bit and then a crypto mining rig when crypto mining was more prevalent. <clears throat> so I've tinkered around a little bit with some electricity in general, but this video is going to be more for show and less of teaching, but you might be able to learn a little bit from it just because it's very dangerous if you do not know what you're doing and you can get seriously hurt. And I don't want to encourage you to take anything apart and start tinkering around and get hurt because I'm not the most proper teacher in the world for something like this. I just use it as a hobby to fix some things around the house and some to design some like things to tinker with. I built an automatic seed deshaller. So the point of this was that it was just a little DC motor that knocked around some seeds until they came unshelled. So just a little hobby stuff like that. In here there's water level sensors, keypad sensors, buzzers, joystick modules, temperature and humidity module, power supply, ultrasonic sensor, water level detector, sound sensor. And you can learn how to use all of these with the Arduino kit. So that's how I learned a lot about how to just know about all these things in general. Inductors, or uh, capacitors, resistors, inductors, all those sorts of things, resistors. I don't know if I just said that. So I had a failure with my plant lights and I wanted to figure out what was going on with them. So I have an LCR tester. I fixed a bunch of these lights in the past. I just want to show you guys how. So this does inductors, capacitors, and resistors and capacitors are measured in farad so there's micro farad nano farad and pico farad and this one just does um, micro farad and nano farad and then we have henry on here and micro henry and then omens for resistors so this one's a cheap one they're great it's hard to get one that does, it's hard to get a good LCR tester that's cheap and this one's like, I forget how much, but I can link it down in the description, but it was a really good bang for your buck for an LCR tester. So again, this is more just for show, but it's just to demonstrate how my thought process went into fixing this. So when I took it apart, most PCBs, those are like the particle boards that are usually like these green boards that you see the circuit boards are labeled and they're typically labeled with what they are. So this one will say like R7, so resistor seven, or like C4, so that could be a, a capacitor four. And then there's different um, measurements for them and they're usually labeled. You can have some trouble when they're not labeled. So this micro Henry inductor was not labeled. If I word anything wrong, I'll just fix it with text because it's a lot to remember. And then we have these 400 volt, 100 microfarad capacitors, a micro Henry inductor, and then I already took it off, but a 470 micro Henry 10 volt low ESR capacitor. So the reason I believe these lights fail, and I've had about eight to 10 of these lights fail, is because a low ESR capacitor is good at power absorption and low power absorption, but
but bad with heat displacement. So they can fail because they overheat from bad heat displacement, essentially. So I bought this kit of low ESR capacitors. They're 10 volt, 470 microfarad capacitors. So you like to discharge a capacitor. Um, there's this great channel, the engineering mindset too, that I learn a lot from here on YouTube, if you're on YouTube for this video. And um, he shows like very professionally what are resistors, conductors, um, or capacitors, inductors, resistors, and uh, he's just very professional and very good at it, and far better of a teacher than me. So you can do that with any piece of metal because it just connects the two leads. Basically just to discharge if it was connected to anything previously, which it wasn't. That's just to be safe with it. And then they're labeled with this negative on the negative side. And again, this video is more or less to inspire you to get into the field if um, you're interested by it. I know there's some people who have broken LEDs they've been holding on to and they don't know how to fix them and maybe this can point you in the right direction. But it's probably not going to be one to one the same with you. But a lot of these tools and same things will apply because they're in the same pieces of equipment. So. Like I was saying, the negative is signified by that one, so this is the negative pole. And then usually on the PCBs, they're labeled as well. So that right there is the negative symbol on that side. Here, let's see if I can point to it. Right there is the negative. Are you seeing Fetty? You're on the wrong side. Right there is the negative symbol. So that's which way the lead will go into on the negative side. So I'm not a professional solder. So if I do anything wrong, I'm sure someone will correct me in the comments, but I know enough to get by. So I have my soldering iron. This one's brand new because my last one fell over and broke because um, I fixed a bunch of these in the past and I just left it out and it fell over and it broke. So I like to dip it in some flux, a brand new tip. Again, if I do anything wrong, just you'll correct me. You might want to wear some gloves and a mask. I have a mask to wear when I start to do this because I don't want to inhale any of this. And the solder can have lead in it. I don't think this is lead solder. It's not labeled and it's been a while. And again, this is probably not going to be the most professional method of doing this. I just dip a new tip into the flux. So I like to make sure that we don't oxidize the tip and rust it out because this will turn to rust. So I like to cover it in some flux just to oxidize it or save it from oxidation. And then we're going to plug it in usually around 300 to 350 Celsius, which is around 572 Fahrenheit to 662 Fahrenheit. Um, anywhere around there is good. So I'm going to set it to 325 Celsius. And we're going to let it heat up. Flip it to the on position. We have multiple different kinds of stands for it. Again, 300 Celsius is incredibly hot. 600 Fahrenheit will melt you like butter. So do not come in contact with the tip. Try to be very safe with it. It's got a short wire, so make sure your work area, there's not gonna be a whole lot of like moving around and stuff. So we're gonna let that heat up. And we keep a little wet sponge underneath the stand. We don't want to breathe in that flux either, so I'm going to throw a mask on, but the mask ruins the microphone, so I won't be able to talk effectively with the microphone. So again, I'm no pro. If this tip starts to oxidize, that's my bad. I'm just going to keep dipping it in flux to keep it from oxidizing. I can smell the flux. So Fetty, let's throw these double masks on you since the respirator doesn't fit on you. And we gotta get you a respirator. Thank you. So, we're gonna shower after this, since we don't wanna be covered in any of these things, and we don't wanna inhale any of this. I'm like going to be inhaling this for the video, but I normally would have this mask on. And I just know it messes up the audio. So, I'm gonna breathe with it here and there while I just collect my thoughts about what's occurring. This mask is old. I could switch to narration. I might switch to narration because I really don't want to inhale this. Um, so if I start narrating, it's because I really want to have the mask on. I don't want to breathe this in. So.
That should be good, right? And then we'll turn on the ceiling fan. Just because I don't want to breathe this in. Okay. So these pop right off. Once you get all the tabs down. Alright, so this is going to flash. If you are prone to seizures or anything, please do not watch for the next 10 to 15 seconds. Just close your eyes. I'm not sure if that's capable of making you have a seizure, but I know it's just going to flash. So if I turn this on, I have it facing downward, so it's not going to be right at your eyes. But if I turn this on, you see how it starts flashing? This, that's what's the problem. That's going to continue to occur unless I change the capacitor. So I only want to show you that like once. You can open your eyes. Okay. So we can get this larger plate off. And now we can see the capacitor that is failing that I took off on the other one. This is a 470 microfarad 10 volt capacitor. And this is the one that is failing. Make sure you've unplugged the light for at least like five minutes to make sure there's no residual power. And then discharge the two metal leads like we did earlier with a piece of metal, preferably with a rubber handle, like a small wire works well, in case you somehow forgot that it's plugged in or something, or if there's residual power left somehow, and the rubber handle will protect you. It's best to disconnect them completely and test them individually, not test them on there from what I know. So like I said, they're typically labeled, but here's how you know it's failing. We're going to rip it right off. And then we see we got the negative and positive, and we got our LCR tester. So we're going to set it to 2000 microfarad, so that's within the range, because 200 microfarad won't be able to reach 470. So then we have negative and positive. You can use connecting leads if you want, or you can stick it right into here, which is why I like this one too. It's not all of them have that. The leads may be too short, because they're really tiny. If they are, we will have to, it has the data hold button. That's what was wrong. If you press the data hold button, it will hold the data it's at. And that's how it's signified that it's at the data hold. So it'll hold at 80. But let's say I don't want it to hold at 80. I click it off. It'll start to actively test what's going on with it. So 78, 77 is not 470. And that's what the issue is. If we take a good one here, like I showed you earlier, you can tell because the long leads. I haven't cut them yet. And we plug that one in. See, so we get 478. There's 5% tolerance, so it's able to go up or down a little bit. So if it's 460 or 480, that's okay. So 478 is perfect and brand new. So now we are going to clip these. So that's how you can test the rest of them. If you have some knowledge of what's occurring, these are capacitors. I have, in the past, taken them off. I may have some clips I can show of me testing the purple ones. and. Not a lot of these were properly labeled. This one is properly labeled and says 470, 10 volt. And just start pulling them off, the ones that are large enough to, and testing them. So if that's a 400 volt, um, 100 microfarad, we would take it off, throw it in, and see under the 200 microfarad, is it going to 100 microfarad? And if it is, then it functions correctly, and we put it back on. If it's going to 20 microfarad, it's obviously not working properly. So that's how I figured out that this was the one that was the issue. I had a little trouble figuring out that this was an inductor, but Fetty's dad is very intelligent and has a very intelligent friend who was able to inform me that that was an inductor because it is not properly labeled and I couldn't figure out what it was. So it's late because I learned how to do this probably like eight or nine months ago and I didn't know a whole lot about inductors and Henry and micro Henry. But this is a one micro Henry inductor and it functions correctly because I've taken it off and tested it with my micro Henry on the LCR tester. So that's how I figured out this one is the issue. So again, I'm not a pro solder, but we are going to just solder these back on. These only take about five minutes to fix and um, again, I only use Mars Hydro. I didn't say it in the beginning of the video, but I affiliate for them and I have discount codes for Grow Lights, Grow Tents, and Grow Tent Kits down below simply because I love them so much because they do not make me do this. I don't want to have to do this and um, the fact that I don't have to with them and they're a great company that make great lights, I would love to support them and work alongside them. So. 
If you want, those codes are listed down below to their website. And also, the rest of my hydroponic gear will be listed down below uh, in my Amazon affiliate link. And I earned from qualifying purchases, so I really appreciate you guys, and you guys have been very supportive of that. But those lights are also on Amazon if you wanted to get them from Amazon. Since I get a lot of questions about where are the lights from, and where do you get them, and how do you get them. So I'm going to throw my mask on. I'm probably going to start narrating and taking my mask off here and there. I'm not sure. Just to finish this up. So when you're soldering, you saw how I just ripped that off. There's a little solder left there. It's all burnt up too. You can see that that's definitely what overheated and had an issue. Um, this one might be a little clearer to see. It doesn't look like it burnt up as much. But there's still a little metal lead on there. Fetty, can you get in real close? There's a little metal lead on there still. So we like to try and take that off by desoldering it. Let me find my desolderer. All right, so I found the desolderer. Essentially what this is is a little air pump. You push this down and it sucks up air into it. So when the solder is really hot and liquefied, you can suck it up into it and desolder. So I'm gonna desolder these leads a little bit. Ow, it poked me. And then um, suck up the solder and try and show that to you guys as best as we can. Um, Fetty, you may want to turn the flash on. All right, so I'm not a professional solderer, but we got it at 325. I like to take some flux and put it on the tip of something. I just used a wire here. You could use like a toothpick or something and rub it on the components and the area around where we're going to be soldering to protect them. You could dip the tip in flux one last time if you want to, if you really like using a lot of flux, but then we tip it with solder. So this is how the solder is going to melt on the components there. If you don't do this, the components are not going to melt as easy when you try to do this. And it could take a lot of solder to tip it up. And yeah, just be careful where it drips because it's going to drip. I'm not the greatest at desoldering. I only took a little off here. This was more just to demonstrate what desoldering is. And you probably should have some safety glasses on. It's going to liquefy long enough. Actually, I'm going to keep that metal lead connection. So, you can reuse the old connections. I just wanted to get the big chunk out of there. You can reuse the old metal connections because it's just old solder. It'll even solder in there easier if there's an old lead connection on the PCB. So we're going to leave that connection there. Let's grab a new 10 volt low ESR capacitor, 470 microfarad. We're going to clip it. Watch out for where those little metal leads go. You don't want to get stabbed by that. And then same thing, we're going to tip it up with some solder and then just solder it on. Making sure, whoa, what is that? Did I do that somehow? <laughs> I must have. Whatever. Hey man, it's a lot harder when you film it. <laughs> anyway, if your tip gets dirty, just use a little sponge that comes with it that is wet to wipe off the tip if it gets black or dirty because you don't want any dirtiness in your solder because it might not stick as well. So let me tip it up and solder it on and then we'll test it and then I'll just fast forward through me doing the rest and I hope that was an accurate representation of how I fix these lights and maybe it'll get you into the hobby and maybe it'll get you into the idea and the thought that you can do it too or maybe that you want to get into it. So yeah, be sure to check out Arduino. I might have one listed down below, I doubt it, but there's a bunch of different kits. And that's how I learned how to do a lot of this. Goodbye. <laughs> Burn your slipper. Okay. Usually there's enough solder on the tip to the point where you don't need to like hold the wire there. That makes sense. Make sure you put your negative where your negative goes. Oop, just like that. And then your positive where your positive goes. If you want, you can use some little tweezers. I can't find my tweezers right now, so I'm risking my fingertips. Yeah, that is because I'm splatting on it. I'm dropping my lead on the top of it. 
Well, don't be dumb like me. Think. And that's on there. Doesn't look perfect, but it's on there. It's not on there. <laughs> <laughs> let's tip this up more and let's not splash on the LED or anybody. That would be very painful. See, like that tip's all dirty now. I just want to clean that off. Again, no pro. Not a pro. Look, like we got a nice shiny new tip. All clean. We're going to go again. All right, there you go. That should work properly. So keep in mind, I'm a jack of all trades and um, I repainted two cars. My two cars, I'd like to show that because it's a lot of hard work to paint a car. And yeah, I'm just proud of a lot of the things that I have done that are very tough. Repainting a car is very tough. Not that this is very tough, but I just like to brag about my cars. Um, yeah, let's plug it in. What do you think? It's going to work? Of course. <laughs> it works. Don't well, look directly at it. That is right. <laughs> so my viewers have been saying that I should protect my eyes, and I completely agree. But I'm only in front of the lights for an hour or two, and I don't look directly at them every couple days. And um, I only might look a little too close to them when I smile for the intros. But I really appreciate you. I'm going to try out some different sunglasses or something in the videos because I think that'd be cool. Just to um, maybe like make it a theme or something. But yeah, and to protect my eyes because they are incredibly bright. So yeah, I'm going to go through and fix the rest of them. And they usually don't fail again. I've had them fail twice, just the low ESR capacitors in these have sometimes. It's not even really a capacitor, I guess it's just the way it's built. Again, I don't really know. But it works. I'm going to throw it back together with my mask on. I've said that enough. Alright, so I fixed them all. Here's a pile of some old capacitors that I have. You can tell how many times I've had to do this because that's the only pile that I'm actually running out of in the kit here. So. Some people have said I could put bigger capacitors in, but they'll likely blow or not work, and I'm not going to try that. I'm just going to keep replacing the ones that are in there. They last like 9, 10 months. Each light can be up to $100 to $150 a piece. So you see capacitors, I see hundreds saved. So it's a useful skill to learn and have. And that's what I was trying to say earlier, is that I'm a jack of all trades. It's not that I'm very specifically great at any one thing, but I do a bunch of things and have. So I skateboard, hacky sack, I was a personal trainer at my dad's gym, and I used to be a lot bigger, and I'm trying to be a vegan bodybuilder, I'm trying to get my size back, but moving across the country takes a lot out of you. Um, I repainted two cars, I know a little bit about this stuff, a little bit about plants. Um, I was a wrestler in high school and wrestled year round in off season camps. And yeah, it's just cause someone was like, oh, you're a nerd, that must be awesome. And it's like, well, I'm, I do a bunch of different things. I'm not just a nerd. And my wife likes that I'm a nerd. But I, um, I also do a lot of different things. So. And then also, I met my wife because I was a manager of a staff of 50 at 17 at a theme park with one other manager and a manager above me. And then a year later, I moved up and was a manager of two managers at 18 with a staff of 60. So I had a call, interview, hire, staff, um, a catering department. We fed two to 3,000 people in two and a half hours, um, once to twice a day in the afternoon and in the evening. And I had two managers under me when I was 18, one manager above me, and about five or six departments. The most people I ever fed was 8,000 in one event, which is ESPN Day. and. I fed a lot of big name companies like Duracell 
and um, CWMP, a bunch of different like co companies in Connecticut. So yeah, I have done a lot. I don't just make YouTube videos and um, yeah. Now that's what I was saying is that's how I met Fetty. Is Fetty was one of my employees, she was a server and she stopped working there, it was a seasonal job and a year later and I stopped working there and a year later we added each other on Facebook and started talking again. So yes she worked for me but when she worked for me we weren't really like near each other or around each other and didn't really know each other at all. So yeah, but I used to be her boss. So, <laughs> so if you want more videos we have our hydroponic plants playlist, what YouTube thinks is best for you or you could subscribe for more. Plus we used to make a bunch of different types of videos in the past that weren't about plants, if you like those.